an epidural steroid injection is the deposition of slow release steroids into the epidural space, preferentially the anterior epidural space where the disc lives and where pain and inflammation accumulates from herniation of the jelly inside the disc like a jelly donut leaks contents out the hole. There are chemicals called prostaglandins that are produced that cause pain and swelling, and epidural steroids stop this enzymatic process, producing pain relief. Typically only five to 15 minutes, depending on the number of levels that have to be treated. Pain relief after an epidural steroid injection typically takes 48 to 72 hours for the anti-inflammatory effect of the steroid to take effect. Slow release steroids are released over weeks to months, producing increasing pain relief. Clinical outcome studies have shown that a patient can have three to four epidural steroid injections in a year to avert any untoward clinical side effects from excessive steroid administration, such as osteoporosis, muscle atrophy, cataracts, or blood supply problems to the hip. Pain relief from epidural steroid injections is both individual and disease specific. The best results are obtained from treating low back pain with sciatica from a herniated disc. The mass majority of patients report greater than 50% relief after a series of two epidural steroid injections into the area where the proverbial jelly has leaked out of the disc, compressing and inflaming the nerve root. The natural disease process is that the body dissolves this extruded jelly over time, and one has a 70% chance of it being completely dissolved after a year. For those patients with recurrent pain, you can have three to four repeat epidural steroid injections in a year. Other disease processes such as lumbar spinal stenosis and fell back surgery syndrome typically do not produce as long-lasting pain relief after epidural steroid injections, but there are other biotechnology treatments. Studies have shown that the total amount of steroids should be limited to five milligrams per kilogram body weight over the course of one year to avert unwanted side effects such as osteoporosis, cataracts, muscle atrophy, and blood supply problems to the hip joint. Epidural steroid injections have a waning pain relieving effect in conditions such as spinal stenosis and fell back surgery syndrome. But there are other treatments we can afford you for these diseases at the Ramos Center such as the minimally invasive lumbar decompression, superior stent placement, peripheral nerve stimulation, and spinal cord stimulation. When receiving epidural steroid injections for low back pain with sciatica due to a herniated disc, one should avoid repetitive bending, twisting, and heavy lifting activities, which will increase the pressure inside the intervertebral disc, causing further herniation of its protein contents. For spinal stenosis, one should avoid prolonged walking, standing, and lumbar spine extension activities, which will narrow an already narrowed spinal canal and increase the inflammation in the canal before the maximum anti-inflammatory effect of the epidural steroid injection can take effect. 
And for failed back surgery syndrome, one should avoid all activities that exacerbate your pain. Multi-center clinical outcome studies have resulted in the development of an interventional pain treatment pyramid for your disease, be it low back pain with sciatica from a herniated disc, spinal stenosis, or failed back surgery syndrome. We start with the least invasive treatments at the base of the pyramid and move up to the more invasive treatments at the apex.